lives were threatened if they yeah. continued the investigation. And, and while those details are, are shocking and, and almost terrifying, given how, many, how much money, over a billion dollars of taxpayer money was spent to support Blackwater, the broader strokes of the article were familiar to anyone who had served in Iraq. We saw these guys. I was lucky enough to be embedded with the U.S. military. And as such, my security was dependent on soldiers who were professionals, who understood what they needed to do in order to protect themselves, to protect me, to do their jobs. Um, and I was very lucky. Whenever I visited the embassy or worked with uh, people from the embassy, we saw Blackwater. And as I said in my book, we meant, well, these guys were basically a frat house with guns. <laughs> That's a great way of describing it. You're talking about these different tribes there, the Kurds, the Shunis, the Siites, mm -hmm. Shiites, and, and to a lot of people uh, who have a biblical background, they might recognize them as like the Medes, the Persians, the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. I, I think that these borders, these boundaries that were set up by the British Empire when they went in there, separating these different groups into different territories and not really setting the boundaries as to where the tribes live, but then putting some tribes, collecting them together into Iraq or to Iran or putting part of them into both of those countries or into uh, Turkey in the case of the Kurds. Mm -hmm. I think that was deliberate to kind of divide and conquer these people. So it's not really surprising, but you know, we put this other tribe in there, this mercenary tribe called Blackwater, which was just like you said, like a, a you know a frat house with guns and a bull in a china shop. And the attitude that they had, given a billion dollars, that they could they could kill anybody that they want. And right after this uh, incident there with the investigators, they in fact did kill whoever they wanted. I mean, they're talking about in terms of details here. They're saying that uh, American personnel were uh, these Blackwater personnel were known for their swagger, their recklessness, running cars off the road, shooting wildly in the streets, even killing civilians. I mean, that's the kind of stuff these guys were doing. That's why I guess the State Department investigators were there and they got uh, told that, well, hey, we'll kill you if we wish. Let me give you some examples of, of Blackwater swagger that I saw or, or, or experienced uh, firsthand. Blackwater guy, the, the soldiers would work out in the gym constantly. That was pretty much one of the few things you had to do in, in your spare time. And even though they worked out all the time and, and ate the same food as the Blackwater people, they got strong, but they didn't get crazy. The Blackwater guys were roided out. It was obvious to anyone who had ever hung around a gym that mm -hmm. the difference between the guys who pumped iron honestly and clean and the guys who were taking steroids. The Blackwater folks were popping veins. They, they were screaming. They were running amok. It was obvious that they were eating steroids uh, like, like candy. The other thing the Blackwater people did is they were legendary for the parties that they held. These were Roman orgies, uh, which is an insult to, to Romans, practically. The thing is, you had to be either a very connected embassy male to get invited to these things, meaning you were one of the people who helped oversee the Blackwater contracts, or you had to be any type of female whatsoever. <laughs> and the stories that came out of these parties were, were incredible. People dancing naked on the bars, rifles being fired off, people passed out drunk, ambulances being called to, to haul off people with alcohol poisoning. Story after story after story. And the next morning, the Blackwater guys would be out there all hung over, armed to the teeth. Um, the soldiers that I work with, constantly made fun of them both both for their hair gel and the gold chains they wore out uh, into the field yeah this clip that's uh, th this picture that was on the new york times article i mean one of those guys it looked like pierce brosnan you know the guy that's out front. i mean it was really <laughs> funny except on steroids <laughs> yes but the other thing the soldiers would, would often talk about uh, and it wouldn't be with as much laughter is how little discipline the blackwater guys had they would exercise no, none of what uh, we called weapons discipline. The idea would be that when you get a whole bunch of people armed with automatic weapons, one of the things you want to do is make sure you don't shoot each other. 
And so without making a, a bad joke about some of those parties, accidental discharges were, were really a, a critical question. You didn't want to accidentally shoot somebody. You didn't want to yeah. accidentally point your gun at, at, a, at a friendly. You wanted to make sure that you were not a danger to others. The Blackwater guys exercised none of that discipline. They no, were dangerous No to real be gun control. We're going to be right back after the break. We're going to talk to you a little bit, uh, James, about... Uh, ISIS. Uh, we had some comments yesterday. Rand Paul was on Hannity. I want to get your take on How it. We'll be right back. How long would you last if all grocery stores cease to exist? Not in America. This can't happen in America. Because of my concern about our government, I was looking at survival stuff. I was raised as a Girl Scout, and their motto was to be prepared. Food for Patriots was an opportunity for me to be able to put some things aside. I said, well, this is a product worth having, seeing as it's so good like the pricing for what I got. I like the containers. They were shipped in. If they keep in touch with you, you get your emails, you get your confirmations. The customer service is just absolutely fantastic. Plan on buying probably about uh, four more of these minimum. And it just came so quick. It came right when they said it would come. Thanks for supplying all this stuff for us because I think we're all going to be needing it in a very short time. Join over 50,000 Americans who have trusted food for patriots. Go to GetSurvivalFood.com to learn more. That's GetSurvivalFood.com. If you're worried about your health and you're tired of the nasty side effects of harsh drugs or antibiotics, then look no further. Supernatural Silver is the answer. Supernatural Silver is a powerful immune system enhancer that can be used every day to help keep you healthy and well with none of those nasty side effects. It's extremely safe for use internally as well as topically. And Supernatural Silver is hundreds of times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. It is perfect for use in the sinuses, eyes, ears, and on any wound or skin issue. Supernatural Silver is also extremely effective when taken orally and can help fight off bacteria, viruses, and mold that may be overwhelming your immune system. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER for 2014 for 20% off of your entire order and give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance with Supernatural Silver. A sudden change in the wind. The day grows dark as ominous clouds move in and lightning begins to carve arcs in the sky. And you realize you are not prepared. I am telling you to yes, take, take cover. The number of intense storms is increasing exponentially in the U.S. Tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, and droughts are happening with greater magnitude and frequency. If you are choosing to rely on the government to save you... And no one's coming to help them. You could be dead wrong. The first step towards self-reliance in the face of disaster is a visit to MyPatriotSupply.com. There you'll find the absolute best prices on storable foods, non-GMO seeds, emergency water filtration devices, and so much more. All orders over $49 qualify for free shipping in the lower 48. Visit us online or call 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. And speak to one of our preparedness advisors today. Remember, before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Attention all radio listeners, Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners here today. Visit MyCreditCardKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and claim yours for free. It's the same knife you've seen in the airline magazines for $29.95, but today it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. MyCreditCardKnife.com, MyCreditCardKnife.com. Go now. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm talking to Peter Van Buren, a longtime State Department diplomat. He wrote a book on his experience. He said, uh, we meant well, how we lost, though, the hearts and minds of the people of Iraq. And as Peter was saying earlier, uh, 
he would retitle it, I Told You So. One of the things that we've been telling people is that the funding of rebels in Syria by the U.S. government was going to have destabilizing, to put it mildly, effects. Rand Paul was just on Hannity last night, and he talks about this. And I wanted to get uh, Peter's uh, take on this. Sorry, Peter, to call you James Risen. We've been talking about this James Risen uh, revelation about uh, Blackwater and how they threatened even State Department officials. There's so much I've called you James <laughs> James twice here, but it's Peter Van Buren, and we're going to talk to him after this segment about the uh, new book that he has, Ghosts of Tom Joe, the story of the 99%. I'm anxious to get to that, but I want to finish up on Iraq since you had so much experience there, and I wanted to get your take on this clip from the Sean Hannity show last night with Rand Paul. Let's play that clip. I think there's a lot of reasons why, you know, these radical Sunni groups that are associated with al-Qaeda, this ISIS group, why they've become stronger. But one of the reasons they're stronger is that we have been allied with them in Syria. We've been funding Islamic rebels who kill Christians. We've been funding Islamic rebels to fight against Iranian proxies in Syria. But now we're on the other side of the war and we would be siding with the Iranian Guard. If we were actually put troops in, they'd be fighting. No, I'm not saying the that Iranian at all. And yeah, and Hannity then tries to spin this back into a, uh, a shell game, as Kurt Nemo puts it in his article where we've embedded that clip. He says, uh, blaming that Obama and the Democrats uh, are, are the ones who really uh, created this situation. What, what's your take on this, on, on our involvement with ISIS? Well, I'm cl it's clear to me that the United States foreign policy is based on a completely failed theory. And I think uh, Rand Paul get, gets at this. The United States, and as a diplomat for 24 years, I, I saw this firsthand. The United States has this fantasy image that the world is a series of chessboards. And the chessboard labeled Syria, and there's one next to it labeled Iraq, and another one labeled Iran, and, and so forth. And that we can make moves on one of those boards, with, which somehow don't don't affect what happens on the other chess boards. Now, of course, in reality, this world is extremely complicated, and particularly when you get into the Middle East. As we talked about earlier in, in the hour, the borders in the, you know, in, in the Middle East are, are artificial. They do not represent where the actual tribal religious lines of, of uh, unity actually lie. The United States has found itself through a series of short term thinking, funding rebels in Syria who are now fighting against the government that the United States is supporting in Iraq, which itself is supported by Iran, who the United States is opposing for its nuclear program. And in fact, the 800 American troops and counting uh, along with their helicopters and drones and, and, and aircraft, are in a position where we're going to be in a supporting role to the Ar Iranian Revolutionary Guard supporting the Shia Maliki government in Iraq. L let me get your reaction to what Wesley Clark said years ago. Where sure. He said there was a plan to go after one country after the other, talked about Libya, Syria, then go into Iran and that sort of thing. Um, do you believe that's the case? Do you believe that it's the case, as, as we've been told by... Uh, uh, some in the intelligence and military community that uh, Benghazi was uh, an effort to supply these rebels so that we could overthrow these governments, so that we could maintain a constant state of chaos and war in that area in order to control it. There's a number of things tangled up in there. First of all, General Clark is absolutely correct. There was a, a plan in 2003 to topple country after country in the Middle East. Iraq was supposed to be the first one. It was supposed to be quick. And the troops were supposed to then turn west into Syria, meet up with uh, the Israelis in Lebanon, and, and basically in a matter of months, maybe a little longer, create a Middle Eastern quick fix. The Iranians were expected to basically sue for peace, cut a deal, they had found they would have found themselves at that time with the American army on their western border in Iraq and the American army on their eastern border in Afghanistan. That was 2003, and that was the plan. Unfortunately, it unraveled pretty quickly. In Libya, when the United States interceded there, we basically repeated the same mistakes as Iraq. We tackled uh, and toppled a strong man, Gaddafi in that case, um, without any plan to replace him. Many people believe that what was happening in Benghazi 
was an attempt by the United States to gather up as many weapons uh, from Libya as possible, particularly shoulder-fired anti-aircraft uh, weapons. Hang on, we're going to have to pick this up on the other side of the break. We've got a hard break coming up. We're talking to Peter Van Buren. We're going to be talking to him about his diplomatic experience in Iraq as well as his new book. Stay with we're us. We're on the 